everyone welcome back to my channel my name is april and today i'm gonna show you how i made a coat for the very first time The way I like to approach my projects is by figuring it out along the way and learning from my mistakes. So this tutorial might be all over the place, but I did research how to sew a notch collar, which is this part right here, because that seems to be the most difficult part for me. So I recommend you guys do the same for anything you're confused on. Overall, I'm super proud with the way this coat turned out. And now the next time I make another one, I won't be so afraid. With that being said, I challenge you guys to try a sewing project this year that you're scared of because whether you make a mistake or not, you're going to learn from it and do better next time. Before we get started, I wanted to share a very special Christmas gift I received last year from a subscriber of mine. They want to stay anonymous, but said it was okay for me to share what the gift was and their letter. It's a very long letter, so I won't be reading it all, but this was my favorite part. Dear April, as an avid hobby sewist and a fan of your YouTube channel, I am strongly inspired by the growth that you have shown in your aesthetic sense, sewing technique, and video and marketing skills, not to mention the sheer longevity of your Cooler But channel. Through watching your videos, I noticed that your strength is your creativity and vision, and that you see sewing more as a means to bring your ideas to life. You're still incrementally growing in terms of polish and refinement in sewing, and that's fine because it's not easy and sometimes very tedious to achieve perfection, which is why so many people do not even try to get started. So this Christmas, I wanted to help invest in your success by giving you the gift of three machines, which I hope will help you achieve better sewing efficiency in the future. I appreciate the three sewing machines so much. Thank you to this anonymous person that sent me them as a Christmas gift. I'm still so shocked that someone I never even met would want to do something like this for me or believe in me this much. So if you're watching this, thank you, thank you, thank you. With that being said, if any of you guys are wondering how you can support me this year, I am on Patreon. I know I don't talk about it or share it that often. Um, but if you want to support me on there, feel free to do so. Thank you to my patrons that have been supporting me monthly so far. We also have a limited amount of Coolerpa t-shirts. This is one of the designs right here. It says, she believed she could, so she did. And this was actually my favorite design. And all the shirts have my signature and logo on it. So if you wanna purchase a t-shirt to support me, you can do so by clicking the link down below in my description box. And this also doesn't mean that I'm not gonna to agree to do a sponsorship ever again. I will still be doing it here and there because to be honest, they are a huge part of how I make a living. And let's say that if my favorite sewing store one day finally decides to sponsor me, then I'm definitely not gonna pass up on that opportunity. So this is one of the sewing machines that my subscribers sent me. It's so heavy duty, you guys, like literally, it's freaking heavy. I thought this coat would be the perfect project for me to test out the machine on. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get started. For my coat, I want the length to be past my knees. So the amount of fabric I got was four yards of this heavy camel outerwear fabric and four yards of lining fabric. Since I had some coats at home that I liked, I thought it would be easier since this is my first time to just trace one instead of design a new one. I went with this green one because the design is a lot more simple and loose fit. To trace an item you have at home, you want to make sure that all of the seams are laying flat. This ended up being more difficult than I thought it would be, so it might save you a headache by purchasing a pattern or just draping a new design. I traced the sleeves, collar, there's a top collar and bottom collar, and then I traced the front jacket and the back side. For the lining pieces, you can use the same pieces for the back side of the coat and the sleeves, but for the front side, you'll want to create a section for the facing so when the center front of the coat flips out, the nice material is still showing. To make the facing, I traced the same front pattern piece onto another piece of paper 
and basically divided it in half, drawing a curved line from the mid shoulder seam down to the bottom. Then go ahead and cut along that line to divide the front into two pieces. And lastly, go back and add your seam allowance along the new seam you created. Once I'm done making my pattern pieces, I cut all of them out. For the outside coat layer, I have two front pieces, two back pieces, one full top collar, two half collars for the under collar, and two sleeves. For the lining pieces, I have one full back piece, two side front pieces, two front facings, and two sleeves. The longest part is always drafting and cutting out all of your pieces. And now all we have to do is construct it. First, sew the center back of the coat closed. Since mine won't have a slit in the back, I just sewed it all the way down to the bottom. Next, sew the front and back coat together along the shoulder and side seams. Then fold each sleeve in half and sew the open side closed. Moving on to the lining layer, it's pretty much the same except you need to sew the side front to the facing first. Then sew the front and back lining pieces together along the shoulder and side seams. After pressing all of the seams open with an iron, I can now attach the sleeves on. If your sleeve is a little bigger than the armhole, you can sew two rows of basting to help ease it in like me. Since my under collar is in two pieces, I sew them together first and press the seam open. Before we can sew the collars to the coat, first mark the seam allowance on both ends of each collar and then press them with your iron. This fold will be a reference for where to stop sewing and I know this is already going to be the most confusing part to explain, so bear with me. On your front pattern piece, one of the markings you should have marked down or clipped is where the notch will happen. This is the piece I'm talking about here. I went two and a half inches in and that is where the collar will start and be sewn onto the neckline. You'll sew the under collar, which is the one with a middle seam, right sides together to the coat along the neckline. This is where the folded ends of the collar that I pressed earlier will be useful. If you look carefully, I need the fold line to match up to the notch marking I made on the front of the coat. This means that the seam allowance will be sticking out past that marking. Then evenly pin the collar along the neckline and sew them together. All of this should have been perfected on your pattern pieces, so everything should fit where they're supposed to. Repeat the same thing to the lining layer and top collar. Afterwards, press all of your seams open and then you can face the two collar right sides together and sew along the top. Then I went ahead and understitched the bottom collar down. Next, I'm going to sew the center front of the coat first before finishing the collar. So throughout this whole process, make sure you're trying your coat on to see if everything fits okay. The next important marking you need to include is how far down you want the lapel to roll or flip out. Then go ahead and make a notch at that marking. Alright, so this part may be really confusing too. After making your notches for the lapel, turn the coat right sides together and sew the center front all the way down to the bottom. 
Then you'll be understitching the lapel in two different directions. The reason for this is when the lapel flips out on top, the stitching won't show. And then below that, when it turns the other way, you will flip the seam allowance in the other direction and understitch it so that the stitching doesn't show down the rest of the coat. Here, I'm understitching the lapel in one direction. And if you watch closely, when I get to my notch, I flip the seam allowance to the other side and continue understitching. This is why you'll want to clip your notch as close to the seam line as possible, but be careful to not cut through the stitching. All right, now we can go back and close up that notch collar, which is the next confusing step I'll be explaining. Make sure to turn your coat inside out so that the collar is facing right sides together and that your seams are lined up. Now remember the seam allowance on the collar I pressed earlier? Well, now we're going to sew that section closed and only that collar section, keeping the seams separated from the rest. Then go ahead and sew the other leg separately as well. The stitching for both should meet at that corner. Now just turn the coat inside out and poke out the corners of the collar. I actually forgot this step, but you should definitely stitch the seam allowance of both collars together so they're attached at the neckline. I would do this after sewing the notch collar. You would have to go underneath in between the two layers to grab the seam allowance of the neckline and sew the two layers together on the seam allowance. The next important part of a coat is the pockets, and I'm making square pockets that will be top stitched on. Decide how big your pockets will be and cut out two from the coat fabric and two from the lining fabric. It took a minute for me to figure out how to line the pocket, hence all the pressing I already did, but the way that worked for me was to sew the lining along the top of the pocket at a half inch, and then flip the lining over to the other side and press the top of the pocket so that a little strip of it is showing on the other side. After that, press the three sides of the pocket with your iron about a half inch so it's ready to be top stitched down. Next, you just have to decide where you want the pockets to sit and mark them in place. I actually thought this was more challenging than figuring out the collar because you have to make sure that the pockets are even on both sides and when you sew them, they can move out of place and end up looking lopsided. I think if I hand sew them in place first, it would have made it less frustrating. The reason why the pocket isn't pinned down is because the pins cause lumps in the fabric. So what I did was trace out the shape of the pocket onto the coat. And as I sewed, I just make sure the pocket was lined up. I attempted this many times, so don't be discouraged. It's funny because I chose this style pocket because it seemed more simple for my first coat. But now I'm starting to think that one of those slit style pockets would have been easier since they already would have been part of the coat pattern. The next thing I didn't realize was that the facing would be attached to the outside coat along the bottom hem, but not the bottom of the lining. As you can see, I already attached the facing and lining together as one piece. So I had to seam rip just enough to sew the facing right side together to the outside coat and just enough to fold the lining underneath as well. After seam ripping, I can sew the facing and coat together along the hem. Now when the bottom corner is turned right sides out, the facing is attached. And then I have to fold the lining underneath even more so that it's not exactly lined up with the bottom of the coat. I pinned everything in place and hand sewed the lining to the coat. For those that purchase sewing patterns to use, there should be step-by-step -step instructions on how to assemble everything so it's not all over the place like this tutorial. But for those that just want to dive into it like me, I hope you guys can learn from my mistakes.
You'll also need to do the same for the sleeve lining. Lastly, I created one buttonhole using the buttonhole foot from my Juki sewing machine. My subscriber that sent me the industrial sewing machine actually sent an industrial buttonhole foot for me to use as well, but I haven't had a chance to figure it out. It looks super complicated, so I just switched back to my Juki machine. I hand sewed a black button on and I'm finished. I'm from Southern California, so this coat is basically useless, but I got to travel to New York and experience actual cold weather. As usual, if you have any tips for me on how I can improve this coat next time, let me know down in the comments because I love learning from you guys. For more ways to support me, you can check out the links down in my description box. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you next time. Bye!